Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we are solving a very common problem. Whenever you photograph a person, oftentimes the buildings in the background have a little bit of a warped perspective. Usually the lines are kind of like leading up towards each other. Now we want to fix that and to do that, we're going to cut our subject out, fix the background and then place our subject back over top of it. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. Now you can see this portrait looks great, but if I zoom out, we can see the lines. Let's just go ahead and click here and then hold shift and click up there with the brush tool. Do the same up here with the brush tool. You can see these lines are kind of like going in towards the center. We've got a little bit of a warped perspective. So we want to fix that. To do that, actually it's really easy to do. Just click here on your background layer. We're going to go to select and then down to subject. So we want to select our subject out. We don't really start want to warp our subject. You're going to run into a lot of issues like their head is going to start looking weird. We want to avoid that. So let's start by selecting at our subject. Now, what we're going to do is duplicate our background layer. So click on the background layer, trick, click and drag it to the new layer icon here, that little plus. There we go. We have a background copy now. And then I'm going to click here on my layer mask icon. Boom. So if I turn my background invisible, you can see, yep, we just have our subject on the background. That looks great. Okay, so now what we need to do is basically create a new version of our background without our subject. Okay, so let's go ahead and double click. We'll just call this subject, fantastic. And then let's make a duplicate of this background layer. Duplicate, boom, and we're gonna call this background clean. There we go, you call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it background clean because we're gonna clean it up. It's gonna get rid of our subject. So first thing we want to do is basically make a selection of our subject. Now we already did that. I can hold control or command and click here on the layer mask and you can see now it's selected. Looking pretty good. Now with our contextual taskbar, I'm going to click right up here on this little edit and we're going to go down to where it says expand selection. There we go. You can also go to select and down to expand selection. We're going to expand it by about 20 pixels and hit OK. All right. So you can see it's a little bit bigger than our subject and that looks pretty good. So now that we have that expanded out from our subject, we're going to use generative fill to just completely fill this with basically like new background information. Now, keep in mind, I'm using Photoshop's beta. Uh, this is generative fill technology. Pretty soon this is going to come to the Photoshop general build. But as of right now, this is in the beta. OK, so I've got that selected on my background clean layer. Looks pretty good. I've made a selection of my subject. I expanded it by 20 pixels. And now we're just going to click here where it says generative fill. So let's go ahead and fill that in. There we go. And then we don't need to type anything. We're just going to hit generate. There we go. And you can see it's working on generating. And then it's going to be available for us here in our property windows. And it's going to give us a few different options. By now, we've probably all seen this generative fill stuff. It's really, really cool. Let's just make sure the layer above it is not visible. There we go. And we can see here's our different options. Like with this stuff, usually like pretty much all of them looks good. There we go. So at this point, there we go. We have our subject. There we go. They're on their own. And then we have our generative fill layer. Perfect. And then we have our background clean layer. And then we have the background itself. So at this point, we basically we need our subject and we need like a clean background. So you could technically like merge all this stuff together. Uh, we're just going to shift click the two of those layers. There we go. You can right click on them and you can go down to where it says merge layers. There we go, merge layers. Because I don't need the generative fill so much. Like I don't need to keep regenerating it. Clean the background up. It did the thing that I need to do. So right now it should look basically exactly like the original image. Let's just call this background clean again. So to recap everything, we started with our background, we cut out our subject, put her on her own layer, and then we cleaned up the background so she's not in it. Okay, so we're perfectly set up now. All I have to do is basically change or warp my background and my subject's going to stay the same because they're on a different layer. So let's see how to do it. First thing I recommend doing is go up to view and then go down to where it says rulers or you can hit control or command R. Now with your rulers, it's really easy to bring in guides. So let's go ahead and zoom in. If I have, if I just basically go all the way over here to where I have my rulers and click and drag, now I have guides. If you hit V for your move tool, you can start to move your guides around. There we go. So let's just grab a couple guides here. There we are. 
Now these guides basically just are straight up and down. You can grab from the top down and make them left and right too. I'm just gonna hit undo because I don't need that. I just need some guides that are straight up and down so I can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better. Now my goal is to like make this column in the background straight up and down. As you can see, it's nowhere near that right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our background layer. Let's just zoom out a little bit, background clean. Hit control or command T and then I'm gonna hold control or command. That's the secret. So control or command T enters in your transform dialog. And then if you hold down just control or command and then click on any one of these little uh, corner points, there we go. You can click and then start to warp your background. And this is basically all we're doing. We're just warping our background. There we go. Let's just like literally all I did. So control or command T and then hold control or command and click there and drag out in that direction. Like literally that's it. And then you can just move your guide right there just to make sure like, okay, is it actually straight up and down now? Let's just keep on moving it around till it's about like looking pretty good. There we go. The guide is like these guides here, they're just to help us see what we're doing. Now here on the left, we need to do that also. So let's hold control or command and let's bring that guide over to the left. There we go. And look, literally I've just visually, I'm seeing like, okay, does it in fact line up with the rest of the image? Like is this, is the guide that goes straight up and down now matching with the column? And there we go, looks pretty good on the left side. I'm gonna just adjust the right side a little bit more. And hey, that looks pretty good. So let's just click this checkbox right up here on the top. There we go. Now for these guides, you can just click and drag them all the way left there and it's gonna remove them. Or you can go up to view and then down where it says guides and you can go where it says clear guides. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit control or command R to remove the rulers. And basically like that's it. Now we're gonna show you a little bit more exam like advanced examples in just a second, but that's the idea. So let's just check this out. Basically here's the before with our background going, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> you gotta make that sound, that's important. And then here's the after. So subject looks exactly the same, great, but the background now looks a lot better. We've cleaned it up and the vertical lines are actually vertical. Super, super cool. All right, we got two more great examples for you. So here's our second example. Our subject looks great, really cool image, but as you can see, these columns and everything, they're all going up towards the center of the photo. Now, technically, there's nothing like wrong with this, but a lot of the times you want these lines to be more vertical. So we're gonna do the same exact steps as we did before, and then in our third example, we're gonna get more complex. So let's go ahead and start off. We've got our background. We're gonna click and drag the background. We're gonna duplicate that. So we've got background copy. Let's go to select and then down here to select, select subject. There we go. And in this case, it's selected the reflection, which is great. It's exactly what we want. Now let's go ahead and put a layer mask on that. And we'll just call this subject. Uh, now sometimes, like if I make that invisible, it did select the subject here, as you can see, but it also selected a bunch of other stuff. We don't want that. So I'm gonna hit L for the lasso tool and just make like a big old lasso selection. And then on my layer mask, we're gonna go to edit and down to fill. And I'm just gonna fill this with black. Hit okay. Basically just makes it invisible. Okay, cool. So it looks the exact same, but we have our background and then we have our subject above it. So let's do this one more time. We're gonna duplicate the background, control or command J to duplicate this background, okay? And then keep in mind, we have to cut our subject out of this background. Cause if I just start, like if I hit control or command T right now and I start stretching this out, things like this, you're gonna see, like you can still see, I'll just make an example here. You can still see the original subject and they're being stretched out, right? So we need to remove the original subject uh, from this. So again, just make a selection of your subject. You can like select the actual layer mask, control or command, click on that, okay? We're gonna go to this little icon right here in our contextual taskbar, boop, and then we're just gonna expand the selection. We'll call it 20 pixels, sounds good. And then we'll just go to generative fill and hit generate. So again, just removing our subject from the image. That's all we're doing here. Alrighty, generative fill. Almost done. I like this little tips they just added to that. All right, you can click on a few different versions. Cool, that one looks okay, except for what's going on there. If it doesn't look good, you just hit generate again, and then, you know, <laughs> it'll generate. It's 
quicker than going in and trying to clone stamp and fix it and things like that. Unless like you really don't get something you want. But you know, in most cases, that, that's totally fine. We're gonna put our subject back over top of that and they're gonna cover up most of that. Okay, cool. So now we have our generative fill layer on top of a regular background layer. So select them both. I'm gonna hold shift and then click on both of these, the generative fill layer and the background copy. Okay, and then we just right click and then we're gonna go all the way down where it says merge layers. There we go. We just merge them together and then boop, our subject is back on top of that. So everything looks brand new, just like it did when it started. All right, we're just gonna call this background clean. Perfect. And now we can hit control or command T and hold control and just start clicking and dragging these areas out until we have a nice straight up and down image. And of course you can even move your center point and you know, change that around. There we go as well. Hit enter there. If you want those guides, control or command R is the way to bring up rulers is the fastest way. And then just go to the left and bring them over. There we go. And then let's hit control or command T again. Let's just bring this over. Wasn't pure, wasn't exactly straight up and down like I wanted it to, but there we go. That looks really good. And then you can hit control or command R again to get rid of your rulers and then go to view and then guides and then clear guides. Uh, amazing, okay, cool. So now we have our subject. Uh, let's just bring our subject down a little bit because that warp actually did wind up like changing quite a bit in the image. So we're just gonna bring our subject down until these lines match up and there we go. So now our subject looks great, not distorted at all. And our background is perfectly symmetrical, perfectly up and down. So this is great. What happens when you have an image that's a little bit more complex? What if you don't need to just change one perspective? What if you need to change multiple perspectives in an image? Now to do that, we're gonna bring in perspective warp. So all the other stuff is gonna be real similar, but we're gonna add into it a new tool called perspective warp, and that's gonna be for our third example. So here's our third example. As you can see, the buildings on the right going leaning down towards the right, on the left going down towards the left. So we need to actually adjust both of those at the same time, a little bit more difficult. So we're gonna start off again, very similar. Just click on your background, select subject, perfect. Okay, let's duplicate that background and then click on that layer mask and we'll just call this subject. It sounds good. Okay, now we're gonna duplicate the background one more time. So we have a background copy. Let's go ahead and select the subject, control or command. You can just click on the layer mask because we already selected the subject, okay. Let's go here to our little adjustment and we're gonna go to expand selection. We'll call it 20 pixels again. Okay, and then we'll generative fill this again. So let's go ahead, generative fill and generate. Keep in mind, we gotta get rid of the original subject, right? Like if we're gonna be moving the background and things like that, uh, the original subject's gotta go. It's not gonna look right. All right, so generating, there we go. So again, it doesn't really look that different now, but with this background clean, we're gonna go to edit and then down here to perspective warp. All right, perspective warp is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and click on our image. Now with perspective warp, basically you create a perspective grid on your image and then you can warp it afterwards. Uh, the UI is a little bit like not great in my opinion. Just keep in mind up here where it says layout and warp. So right now we're in the layout phase. That's where we actually create the UI stuff, uh, like create our grids. And then when we're done, then we click on warp. Okay. So for this, let's go ahead and click down here. Basically, you just wanna like follow the perspective lines of like the building or the object that you're working with, right? There we go. And like most of the time, you're gonna wanna go like way outside of the bounds um, because you want everything to like line up. Like you see how this line right there in my perspective work? I want that to be at the same angle as the line of the window right here, okay? And then this one, I want it to be the same line as that window up there. So to get it a little better, let's try to click here and drag down. There we go. You can see that these are starting to line up a little bit better, right? So if I click and drag this down a little bit more, okay, 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 cool. That's lining up a little bit better. This one here, let's take this one and drag it down there. You gotta kind of like, you know, move these around a little bit until they get pretty close. That looks pretty good. And then once they get close enough, then you just hold the shift key down and you click and drag this and it just gets like bigger, okay? And then click and drag this one and it gets bigger. And then you can continue to make like little adjustments if you want. But basically like for this to work like well, 
you want these perspective grids to be like larger than your image. Like they, they gotta get bigger. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. Let's click here, okay? Click and drag out another one. Then we can click this point here and boop, connect it to the original one. There we go. So if I click right there, it's supposed to connect. I don't know why it's not. Let's zoom out, let's try to connect this one. There we go. See how I get a little closer and then this line gets a little bit thicker blue. So there we go. See how it's, when I put it here, the line on this line is not as thick and it has a black outline, but if I click it closer, come on, do your thing. There we go. Now you can see they're both like bright blue. That's gonna connect it. That's that's the that's the code name for, let's go ahead and connect these. Okay, so now you can adjust this to be a little bit closer to like how you actually want it to look. And that's starting to look pretty good too. Keep in mind, these lines here, like this, you want it to match with the window lines generally well. Um, okay, is this perfect? No, this is like what I would say, it, it's not perfect, but you can continue, continue, continue to adjust it and try to make it better. Like ideally, pretty much all the lines will be similar. So like this line, see how it travels up the side of the building and it's relatively like in line with that. And these window lines are pretty good too. It's not perfect, admittedly, but uh, it's very difficult to get it perfect. And it's it's pretty good. Like I would say all in all, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> there we go. You can kind of come in here and adjust it until your heart's desire. But all in all, that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and create another one. Let's put it down there. There we go. This is our ground line here. And then we'll make another one. And then this will be our ground on the right hand side. I don't use this tool a lot. It's powerful, but it's a little complicated. Okay, so now that we've done all of that work and we've got our perspective and our grid and everything is like pretty good. Now, what we're gonna do, remember we talked about the UI of this, uh, we're in the layout mode right now. So now we're gonna click on the warp button and where it's gonna go to warp mode. So now I can click on these lines and look at this. I can start to adjust all of these. We'll just grab this top one here. There we go, drag this down, zoom in a little bit so you guys can see we're doing a little bit better. A, a little bit better. There we go, and we're gonna drag that out. So we're dragging out all of these lines until basically like all this stuff looks a lot more straight up and down. Like that's, that's the goal with this. There we go, is to make these lines, just like in the other photos, is to make these lines instead of being all, you know, uh, super warped, they should be like straight up and down. Like, you know, there we go. And I gotta say it's looking, looking better. Okay, cool. So these lines are, for the most part, they're looking more like vertical than they were. So that's great. Let's hit enter. I know this is definitely more complex, right? So that works, but then what we're gonna need to do is clean a bunch of the stuff up, right? So let's grab our lasso tool. Okay, let's just lasso all this because like this stuff didn't exist. But now, there we go. Because of generative fill, we can just generate this on top of this. So we have like the building for the most part. We've fixed the perspective of both sides of the building. And now we're just gonna generate like the top part of the building. How amazing is that, right? Like what? The fact that we could do that is super, super cool. All right, let's just go right there. And then I don't even know what that is. So we're just gonna get rid of that. There we go. And let's hit generative fill right there as well. So now like long example here, but basically if you have multiple different perspectives, complex perspectives, you can use this perspective warp tool and then adjust those and then fill everything in. So you can see the background looks like much more whoop, straight up and down and we're looking good. And then just basically just turn your subject back on again and in this case, we just have to move our subject a little bit, but look how cool that looks. Way, way different. So let's just turn that before, okay? We can see everything is at a crazy angle, the building, everything like that. And then here in the after, it's a lot more clean. Architecture looks good and our subject still looks really good as well. So a few different examples showing you guys how to fix the perspective of your image while keeping your subject the exact same. 
Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget you can download all of these sample files on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. Hit that subscribe button for more free Photoshop tutorials and give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Thanks again. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.